we need to, we need to we need to be extremely conscious and 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 energy and energy conscious as opposed to price conscious as to how we ship goods uh, because particularly since most goods are shipped from thousands and thousands of miles away and right now the conventional wisdom is you know obviously across the Pacific you have you have cargo vessels uh, but once they get to shore they basically get unloaded in very congested ports and occasionally put on trains, but our train system's so screwed up because we have single tracks in most places. So we, we fan out across the United States with, with these semi-trucks tra uh, getting three to five miles per gallon. Uh, on the guise that basically that allows you to get right to the place you want. We need to basically reassemble. First of all, they should never come to the ports. There should be floating islands and all the goods taken apart and reassembled to where they're going, like Federal Express and UPS do, and then put them on barges. And in the barge business, they have what's called a six pack, three wide, six long, pushed by one big heavy horsepower tug. A six pack can take 340 truckloads of goods from San Diego down through the Panama Canal, hug the intercoastal waterway, go through the canal in the Panhandle of Florida, get up to Portland, Maine in about 13 days, and it uses one thirty-fifth the amount of diesel fuel that you'd have on the 340 trucks. That's not technology. That's just being smart. In the whole debate about bountiful supply or scarcity of supply, uh, many argue that the, only, the biggest unknown factor is yet to be discovered oil. And that's certainly an unknown factor because anything you've yet to discover, by definition, you don't know where it is. But in my opinion, the thing that the biggest uncertainty that blows that away by a, by a scale of 10 to 1 is what is the average decline rate today of the existing production base, or is it declining? Uh, and if it is declining, it, you know, it varies by region, it varies by field, but you do have an average. And then a bigger question is, will that decline rate accelerate? And as an empirical evidence data guy, I look to the experience of the United States of America when we went into a free fall, and our decline rate went from 10.1 10 10 .1 million barrels a day in 1970 uh, down to 6.9 by 1981, if you exclude Alaska, which wasn't in either number. If you exclude Alaska in deep water, it's now down to two. So it came down like that. The North Sea used far more aggressive modern oil field technology, the same tools that the optimists say we will never decline, and the North Sea decline profile looked like that. It took, they, they peaked in 1999 at 6.1 million barrels a day, and the UK's down to 1.1, and Norway's down to 1.7 uh, in seven years. So uh, the, the, uh, the conventional wisdom is now finally acknowledging that there clearly is a decline rate on average, even though some still think the, the Middle East don't have any declines, they just don't have a clue and there's no data, but the Middle East does have declines. Um, if it's 5% per annum, then basically we only, and, and you have modest growth rates, we only need to, need to add 60 million barrels a day in 10 years to make the two average. That's six, that's, that's 10 new North Seas. The odds of that are zero. There was a group, very credible group in Germany called Energy Watch Group that published a report uh, at the start of this week that I just had a chance to carefully read yesterday. It's a first-rate study. They basically say that the global crude oil peaked in 2006 and by 2030 it'll be down to 39 million barrels a day.